Recently I uploaded a video documenting my experience getting the PC version of Minecraft to run on my phone, and since then a lot of people have been asking for a more in-depth tutorial on how I got it working. So, here it is. The first thing we need to do is install the app itself. In the links section of this video's description, click on the first link that should go to this GitHub page. There are two files we need to download. The first is the most recent APK file, and the second is the runtime pack. Under the most recent version at the moment, it says that the runtime pack is the same as in version 0.1.0. So I'm going to download the 0.1.3 APK, and then scroll down to find the runtime pack 2, which is right here, .tar.xz. Once the downloads are done, we need to install the app through the APK file. Since we didn't download it through the Play Store, you're probably going to be prompted to enable apps from unknown sources. This process varies depending on what phone you have, but it's usually as simple as going into settings, allowing app installs, and going back. Afterwards, just tap on install. After it finishes installing, tap on open and allow the storage permission. After the app has been opened at least once, we can now move on to installing the runtime file. Here you can see I'm in my default file manager app. Pretty much all recent Android phones should have an app like this, usually just called files. If your phone doesn't, you can download third-party apps from the Play Store or even plug your phone into a computer and browse through files that way. I'm just going to navigate into my downloads folder, which is usually on the top level of the internal storage and it's just called download. So in the download folder, we can find the .tar.exe runtime pack we downloaded earlier, which we just need to move into the MC in a box data folder. So we go back here and we go into the Android folder, then data, then find com.aof.mc in a box. And once we're in there, we just need to find the runtime pack folder and move the file there. After it's finished moving, we can go back to the MC in a box app, scroll down in the sidebar, tap on launcher settings, and then tap the install button next to the runtime pack. If you moved it in the right folder, it should already have detected it, and importing should only take a few seconds. There we go. Now that's done, we can move on to setting up Minecraft. So over here, we can tap on all versions, then tap on install version, and we can actually pick a version from this list to install. It's important to note that at the time of recording this, versions above 1.13 have been having various rendering issues, but hopefully that'll be fixed soon since the app is open source. I'm going to choose 1.8.9 for the sake of this video since it downloads quickly and it runs pretty well. The download process does take a while and sometimes, like you see here, it actually just freezes completely. It was at 98% for about, I don't know, like 20 minutes. If this happens, just cancel, but make sure you restart the download and let it finish properly. After it's done, tap on OK, and now we need to move on to the next step, which is the virtual keyboard. This is really annoying, and it's my least favorite part of all of this. Basically, you have to tap this tiny plus button at the top to create a virtual button, write down what you want it to be called, then you select which keyboard key it's going to press, and then you set the size and color in pixels. You have to set the size in pixels. Wh what? So this video doesn't become two hours long, I'm just going to fast forward through this. I'm not going to bother setting up a super nice keyboard layout right now, since I just want to get something working to test it. After your layout is complete, tap on the save button at the top and name it whatever you like. Once we're back here, we can tap this button at the top to select which keyboard layout is currently active and how much RAM is allocated to the game. Despite having 6 gigabytes, I've only managed to set it as high as 512 megabytes on my phone, but you might be able to go higher on yours. And once that's all done, the final thing we need to do is set up our user account. So there are two types of accounts, offline accounts and online accounts. Online accounts let you join multiplayer servers, and they're the same as just regular Minecraft account that you'd use on your computer. For this, you'll need to check the online box and enter your email and password just like you would in the regular Minecraft launcher. Alternatively, you can keep the box unchecked and just enter a username to create an offline account. This will let you pick any name you want, but you won't be able to join most online mode servers. For now, I'll just make an offline account called Fred, go back to the main screen, and tap on Launch to see if it works. And... It's working! Something I forgot to mention while I was recording this video was this control panel at the top. So each of these buttons does something different, and it's a good idea to know what they do just in case you ever need them. Also, you can actually drag it around to move it out of the way or put it somewhere else on the screen if you want. So this first button up here opens a virtual keyboard that has basically every key, all the function keys. This second button opens a pocket edition style D-pad. This third button is kind of similar, it opens a left and right click so you also don't have to put that in your layout. The fourth button hides the on-screen keyboard layout, so if it's getting in the way or you don't want it there, you can tap that and it will just show or hide the layout that you've set. The next button opens kind of similar to the second one, except instead of a D-pad, it's more like a joystick-style controls. This opens a text input field in the top right, so if you tap that, it, it'll actually open your uh, phone's keyboard, 
and it's basically the same as the on-screen keyboard if you need to enter something into a sign or whatever. Uh, this button lets you move around on-screen elements, so let's say if you had these two open, you could press the lock button and then you can actually control where they are on the screen. And lastly, this button at the end here toggles between relative and absolute mouse movement. So now that it works, it's time to install Forge and Optifine. So back in the links section of this video, click on the Forge download link in the description, and you should be taken to a page like this. You can tap the menu bar at the top to see a list of versions, but I'm gonna go with 1.8.9 since I already installed that. In the download options, I'm gonna choose the recommended version of Forge and click on the universal installer, which will be a jar file. After clicking on the download, you'll get taken to one of these ad pages. Just wait about five seconds and then tap the skip button in the corner to start downloading. Once the download is done, we need to go back to the file manager and do a similar thing we did before. So I'm gonna move into my download folder, select the Forge installer, tap on move, and once again go back to the folder located in Android data box. The only difference this time is that we're moving it to the Forge installer folder rather than the runtime pack folder. So just go into Forge installer and move it there. Once that's done, we can go back to the app and see that just like before, it's automatically detected the Forge installer. However, clicking on install right away will show this Chinese error message. So before we can install Forge, we actually need to change the download source up here from official to BMCL API. After that's done, we can now click install again and it should start working normally. This also might take a while, but after it's done, we can go back and see that 1.8.9 Forge has been added to our versions list. We can select it and tap start game to give it a quick test. So as you can see, there's now a mods option on the menu and the Forge text is shown in the bottom left, which means Forge is working. So now that you've installed Forge, you can basically install any mod or mod pack that you'd like. So you can follow along and do this with any mod you like, but I'm just gonna go with Optifine. Since I'm only gonna be using Optifine, I'll head to the Optifine website and download the mirror for version 1.8.9. After it's done, we need to repeat a similar process as before where we move it, except this time it's gonna be a little different. Instead of moving it into the Android data folder, we're actually just gonna move it directly into the MC in a box folder on the top level of the file system. So directly in MC in a box, we're looking for a .minecraft folder. Right now I can't see it, and that's because I haven't enabled viewing hidden files. Your phone might vary, but for me, what I have to do is go into settings and enable viewing hidden folders like so, and if that doesn't work for you, you can just download a third-party file manager or use the PC like before. Once the Minecraft folder is visible, we can go back, move the Optifine jar, go into MC in a box, move it into .minecraft, and then move it into the mods folder, just like you would if you'd installed Forge on a PC. After you've done that, your mods are basically installed, so we can go back into the app, launch up Forge, and we can see that Optifine is working. It doesn't show up as a mod, but if you check down here, you can actually see that Optifine does in fact show up, which means everything's working. From here, it's just a matter of tinkering with performance settings to see what works best for you or your specific device. I recommend maybe fast render or turning on internal shaders and lowering the render quality. But the best solution will vary based on how powerful your phone is, so just have a look in the Optifine settings and see what you can change. Now that Optifine is working, performance is actually pretty good. It's usually 60 FPS or above with any version, not just 1.8. Again, if you don't want to use Optifine and you'd rather use a, a special mod pack or something, you can just repeat the process of moving the mods into the mods folder. Just instead of Optifine, you put whatever other mod file you want. Hopefully this video was helpful. Uh, if you want some more information on how I got all this working in the first place, then do check out my other video, which I uploaded last week. It should be linked in a card on the screen right now. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions on this or if you have run into any trouble. And like the video if you found it useful, I guess. My Twitch, Twitter, Discord, all that will be in the description. And maybe subscribe and check out some of my other content if you're looking for something to watch. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.